Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson in Unit 5, Writing Glasses. This is actually the last lesson of this unit where we are going to be discussing the this keyword along with the equals method in our object creating class. So up to this point, all of the lessons in this unit have led us here to the almost complete dog class. So let's just kind of review where we've been so far. So we have in our dog class, we start off with our instance variables. Remember that represents the data of our object. We have a default constructor that creates an object with default data. And then we have parameter constructors that creates an object with known data. Now all of these we actually went over back in unit 2 um, and now we are using again here in unit 5. So this should be nothing new. What we've learned about so far in this unit, um, first were the accessor methods that allow us to see data of private instance variables. So we have three of them since we have three instance variables. And then we have three mutator methods that allow us to modify data of private instance variables as well. So again, three mutator methods because we have three instance variables. Okay. And then we have some um, special methods here. So the first one was the two string method that is going to output our instance variables as a single string formatted in some way, whatever way I need to um, use it in the program. The second one is going to be the equals method. Now I say implementation not shown because we have um, not talked about this. This is going to be the very first thing we're going to talk about here next is the equals method that compares two dog objects to check if their data is equal. And then the last thing is our other methods. Now we haven't talked about these so yet in this unit, but just know that um, other methods can exist. These would be non-static methods, so no static keyword. These would be methods that are specific to the dog object, so specific to the behavior of the dog um, and specific to changing um, or doing something with the instance variables of the dog object. Okay, so that would be our complete dog class, except we don't know about that equals method yet. So let's talk about that. The equals method is created to compare two of the same object. Okay, this is what we're going to write is to test to see if two dog objects are identical or not and identical in their instance variables. Um, first, though, we do have a way we um, compare values, and that's with the equal equal, right? So we saw that um, with if statements, with loops, um, all of that, we check with the equal equal, and this is why it's not going to work for objects, okay? Um, so remember when object instantiation happens, this is what it kind of quote unquote looks like in memory, right? So if I have a new doggy, object. Dog is my reference and it points to name, age, good dog, my data, right? And then I have puppers. So I create a brand new dog object called puppers and it's actually going to have the same information, um, but it's not going to point to the same thing, two separate pieces of data. And then I create a dog pup equals puppers. So now I'm creating this dog called pup and it's going to be equal to puppers, meaning it's going to point to the same location as puppers is pointing to. Okay. So when we assign that, um, the reference, both of those references point to the same memory location. Okay. Same memory location. So when testing for equality using that equal equal, we're asking Java if the reference variables point to the same location. That's actually what that equal equal is going to do in response to objects. So this is going to print false because doggy and puppers point to different locations in memory, right? Doggy points here and puppers points here. Even though they have the same data, uh, they're not pointing to the same location. So the equal equal to will actually print false versus pup equals puppers, they actually are pointing to the same location. So that would end up printing true. Okay. So that's what the equal equal to does with objects, but you can see how we don't really care about locations in memory. That's not what we're after when we're trying to say, are these two objects equivalent? We want to actually compare their data. 
And if we want to compare their data, we have to make a method in our object class to check all instance variables of each of the objects to see if they have the same values. So there's two ways that we could write this equals method. Um, I'm going to show you this first way here. Um, you'll notice that it starts off uh, as public method, and it's going to return a Boolean. Okay. It's going to return true or false depending on if the instance, all the instance variables are equal or not. Okay. Um, this method is called on using an object. So you're going to have the reference dot and then the equals method name. And then in parentheses, you're going to have the parameter and that's the object you're comparing it to. So that's why in parentheses, we have a dog object and we're just going to call it other. So first in this method, and this is what's happening right here, we need to get the values of all of the instance variables of that dog parameter. So I have other.getName, other.getAge, and other.getGoodDog. So I'm using those accessors, and I'm going to store them in brand new variables. Other name, other age, and other good dog is what I've called them. Okay, so I have to access others' data by using those accessors methods. And then next, I need to check. Okay, I need to check if name, age, and good dog of our calling object is equal to the other's value. So I can use name, age, and good dog because those represent instance variables of my calling reference. So I'm going to see if name dot equals other name. And I use that dot equals method because that's for our strings. Okay, so remember, we compare strings by using a dot equals method. That's because the string object has a dot equals method. Okay? So I compare my strings and I compare my ages. I use the equal, equal to because it's um, an integer. And I compare my Booleans. Okay? And if all of those are equal, this and this and this, if they're all equal, I'm going to return true. That yes, this dog equals the other dog. Okay? Else, I return false and they are not equal. The other way I could write this is a more condensed version. So the condensed version I'm about to show you in a moment, basically, oops, I don't know why that happened, got rid of this and used method chaining. Okay, So instead of writing um, using that um, um, temporary variable called other name, it just uses the actual get name and does a method chain. Other dot get age and good dog, other got dot get good dog. Okay. So just a little bit of a method chain. So now what will happen is I have the same dog. Now I have a dog, Becky, I guess. Um, dog, puppers, and Becky. Okay. Doggy, doggy is going to point to that puppers just for a nice visual. I didn't have this. And then now we got Becky all of a sudden instead of pups, but that's fine. So but Becky and Puppers point to the same data. Doggy and Puppers actually do have the exact same data. So now this will print true doggy.equals Puppers because they have the same data. And even this one, Becky.equals Doggy, those are going to print true because, again, they have the same data. Okay? So now your dot .equals method works exactly like you want it to work. Which brings us to the this keyword. So the this keyword, one way we can use it is by making our equals method more efficient. Okay? The this keyword is used in front of an instance variable along with the dot notation to make it explicitly clear that when we call our instance variables, you're wanting to call the calling object's state. Okay? Um, so remember, the calling object refers to the reference that was used to call the method. So if I did doggy.equals puppers, doggy is the calling object and puppers is the parameter object. Okay? So you can call on doggy's name. Before in our equals method, we just used name and that represent, represented doggy's name. Or now you can introduce this, do, this notation, this.name. Or you can call on puppers name by using the other.get name. Okay? or you can only call using other.getName. You have to use that, that accessor method in order to get the other, in order to get the parameter object's 
data. You have to use accessors. Okay. But the calling object, now you can use the this keyword. Okay. So now you see I just changed it. I put it in bold here. This.name, this.age, this.gooddog to make it explicitly clear that you're talking about this, the calling object, their name, their age, and their good dog. So it makes our equals method more efficient. Um, there's a couple of other ways we can use the this keyword. One of those ways is with constructors, okay? Um, you can make your constructors just more efficient by using this. Um, and one of the ways is to use it for our, um, per calling on our parameter constructor from our default constructor. So this is what that would look like, okay? So notice how I have my default constructor header public dog that's a default constructor. But now, instead of having three statements where name equals none, age equals zero, good dog equals true, I actually make use of a parameter constructor. So using the keyword this and then passing d those three default values to our parameter constructor just makes a more efficient um, default constructor. Okay, so that's another way we can use the this keyword. Okay, it allows you to call on a method, um, allows the method to call on another method within its class. Okay, so you can use your default constructor, just one line, and it just removes the use of repeated code. Okay, um, you can also use it um, if you only have some information for your dog object. So let's say our parameter constructor that only had two parameters, we could use again the the parameter constructor that accepts three parameters, pass it and pass it A, and then pass it a default value of true is another way we could use it. There are other ways we can use the this keyword in inheritance that we're going to talk about in unit nine. Um, but for now, this is just kind of an introduction into what the this keyword is and how you could use it at this moment with your coding knowledge. Okay. And that wraps up this quick lesson on the this keyword and as well as the equals method that we went through. So I appreciate you guys watching and that wraps up unit five and I will see you next time for unit six.